This year, it's all about the new. New decade, new faces, new expectations. And as the Cowboys are on their quest for six, they got the same dream. Where would this team go? There's no limits to what they can accomplish. So with a fresh perspective and a new direction, the 2020 Dallas Cowboys are determined to find greatness. And it all starts this offseason, right here on The Blitz. It's time for another edition of The Blitz, your Dallas Cowboys report. Bill Jones along with Kyle Yeomans as we continue in virtual reality. The virtual offseason continues for the Cowboys as we now move into the month of May. Things are progressing on that front as far as the offseason is concerned. Over the course of the next half hour, Kyle will be hearing from Will McClay, get his perspective on the draft. But uh, we just continue to try to press on, don't we? Absolutely. You got to stay safe, stay socially distanced, but the NFL offseason continues and you see all of the additions being made. There are players still being added to these rosters. You've got to build toward that 2020 season, even though there's some uncertainty around when it'll start, if it'll happen on time, but it, you can't necessarily plan like that. You got to stay in the moment and continue to improve your football team. And that's what the Cowboys have done over the last couple of weeks. And in fact, uh, over the last week, they continued to improve their football team after the draft. Let's talk about the veteran signing they had earlier in the week as the cornerback Daryl Worley, who started 15 games for the Raiders last year, actually played some at safety late in the season, comes aboard, adds to that secondary mix. Yeah, he's not your normal veteran, just 25 years old. He's had four years of starting experience, two with the Carolina Panthers who drafted him, two with the Raiders following that. And a guy who entered the NFL draft maybe a little bit earlier than was advised to out of West Virginia, but somebody who brings some length and some extra athleticism to that corner spot. I think overall you, you look at what he has to bring to the table. He's had at least an interception in each of his four seasons he's had a multi-interception year and was close enough to getting three interceptions uh, uh, of course we haven't had a corner for the Dallas Cowboys receive three interceptions since Terrence Newman so it's been quite some time that you've seen a ball hawk like this potentially come in on a veteran deal for Dallas I like the addition because it continues to add to that shift we're starting to see at the cornerback spot and the other thing it does for these young cornerbacks, the second round draft pick Trayvon Diggs, the fourth rounder uh, Reggie Robinson, it buys them some time too because they don't have a real off season to go to, uh, go through. And so now you've got a veteran guy added to the mix along with Anthony Brown, Cheeto Awuzie, and Jordan Lewis at the cornerback position. Yeah, and you could also throw Maurice Kennedy in there as well. All four of those guys, Kennedy, Robinson, Diggs, and then add Worley to that mix are all lengthy corners. They're all over 6'1". Diggs is the biggest out of the bunch at 6'2". And it's kind of that shift you're starting to see with that defensive coordinator mindset from Mike Nolan of, we want bigger corners. There's going to be an opportunity potentially to see those four guys as your starters at some point, maybe later in the season, maybe into next season, depending on how the deals and free agency season shakes out with Cheeto Awuzie and Jordan Lewis coming up next offseason. But the fact that you have some pieces and you have some options in that cornerback room, it's a little bit more encouraging than it was going into the draft a couple of days ago. And you've got some cornerbacks who can also play safety. They're always looking for position flex. We're just getting started here on this edition of the Blitz. I wonder what the MVP of the draft, Will McClay, has to say about the uh, draft weekend that was a week ago. I bet you one thing he says, he's not the MVP of the draft. He's next. The Dallas Cowboys Blitz is brought to you by AT&T. Just okay is not okay and by the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. This segment is brought to you by AT&T. Just okay is not okay. And welcome back to the Blitz, your Dallas Cowboys report. Bill Jones now joined by Will McClay, who some are saying was the MVP of the 2020 National Football League draft. You will never hear Will McClay say that. In fact, he will say that there are a lot of other people who were the most valuable players of this draft. Right, Will? I'm just a wheel in the car. <laughs> well, uh, here a week later after this draft, uh, what's the feeling like for you and for all those scouts who have been all, put in all that work here over the last few months and actually more longer than that? 
Um, I think it's the, you know, at this point in time, it's a little bit of the relief, uh, but there's, there's also the excitement of hopefully at some point in time getting back to it when our country's safe to get back to football and sports and the lesser important things. But uh, uh, we're just kind of relaxing now and looking forward to the next challenge. Well, uh, let's start at the top of that draft in uh, C.D. Lamb. A lot of people surprised that he was even available at uh, 17. This was a terrific draft as far as wide receivers are concerned. What is it that sets C.D. apart, you think? Um, I think that there's some NFL-ready traits about him. He can play inside and outside. Uh, he's extremely effective with the ball in his hands. Uh, he runs good routes, and he just adds another weapon uh, potentially to what we have, and it'll make uh, the offense very hard for defense to plan for. You know, uh, you look at what you did in the second round. You went uh, cornerback with Trayvon Diggs. Neville Gallimore, you had a high grade on who You wound up being able to take in the uh, third round. What was the, some of the decision-making process that went into to going ahead and taking the cornerback in the second round and waiting on Gallimore in the third? Well, the players uh, had very similar grades, and when you um, look at the draft board and where things are falling. You got to kind of play the market, so to speak, uh, and you expect runs on different things. And um, you know there weren't a lot of um, corners that we felt uh, fit our profile um, at at that high level. And so we felt like that Diggs was the best pick for us there because there was also a lot of defensive linemen. While we loved Gallimore, uh, we thought that there was more. Uh, supply in that side, you know, as the draft kind of went. When you look at uh, Trayvon Diggs, of course, he's the younger brother of Stephon Diggs, a wide receiver, was with the Vikings, now with the Bills, and he was a wide receiver his freshman year at Alabama. Where do you see him and his uh, how he projects in, in the NFL? Uh, because he's only got two years of starting experience at cornerback under his belt at a great school, Alabama. Yeah, I mean, first of all, he was trained at Alabama. He knows all the defenses, and he's had to learn the schemes. But as you said, he's only played two years of defensive back, and so we think that the sky is the limit um, with the great coaching that we have. And the more reps that he gets at corner, uh, he'll be able to use those ball skills. He's got a unique uh, uh, build and athletic skill set for the corner position. And, you know, you talk about turning the ball over. you got to get balls at guys that can catch the ball before you get turnovers, and he has those traits. And, of course, you added to your uh, defensive back inventory there in the fourth round with a guy, Reggie Robinson the second out of Cleburne and Tulsa University. He blew up the combine. His measurables were through the roof. and had four picks his last year at Tulsa, too. Yeah, he's one of those guys that, you know, as we look at rebuilding our, our, our uh, defensive backfield, losing Byron, you know, bringing new guys in, there's a, a type of player that we were looking for to fit our system is the long physical um, press outside corners. And Reggie's got the size, speed, and athleticism to hopefully develop under, you know, under our, our, our coaches. You know, one of the things I want to ask you about, uh, not related to the draft, but uh, this past week, you signed Daryl Worley, who started 15 games for the Raiders uh, last year. has been a starter throughout his career, was a third-round pick in uh, 2016. Uh, by Carolina. Uh, I thought it was a shrewd move to come up with a veteran guy because uh, obviously losing Byron Jones and Worley is a type guy I think late in the season just looking at him against the Chiefs and again against the Chargers late in the season he played some safety for the Raiders as well late in the year last year. Yeah he's a veteran player that that uh, again fits what we're looking for uh, from a style of corner and he's got starting experience He's also played the safety position. He's played corner. He's moved around. And so one of the things Coach McCarthy talks about is the versatility in the secondary. Based on matchups and how the game is played, he gives you potentially another chess piece. And what we're trying to do is add competition throughout the roster. Uh, but if you got competition throughout, then the, the, the cream will rise to the top. Okay, now one other question, Tyler Biatas, you uh, trade up to take him with the last pick of the fourth round, uh, and, and how do you see uh, Tyler fitting in, the Remington Award winner at Wisconsin? I thought that was a great move to move up and take him. Well, we want to keep our, our, our strength our strength, and uh, for a long time it's been the offensive line, and so when you have an opportunity to add another high-quality player to your lineup, it just makes your team that much stronger. I think he has an opportunity to compete. First of all, we have Joe Looney back, and people tend to forget that when Joe was starting, uh, when Travis was sick, Joe did a very good job, led us to the playoffs. Um, you know, and so we've got Connor, uh, Connor McGovern. Uh, we've got guys to compete there, and, and again, Tyler only makes that a stronger group. All right. 
Will McClay, we appreciate it. Uh, I know there's no rest for the weary. Uh, uh, you're, you're already working on 2021, I'm sure. But there's a lot to, uh, to happen here as far as uh, signing these college free agents and also in free agency. The, the work never ends, does it? It never ends. We're always trying to compete to win a championship. That's our goal, and uh, we're fighting to get there. All right, Will McClay, we appreciate it. And the Blitz continues as we take an up-close look at the expectations for this draft class in just a moment. This segment was brought to you by AT&T. Just okay is not okay. Welcome back to the Blitz, your Dallas Cowboys report. Bill Jones along with Kyle Yeomans. And now we hear from Dave Hellman, who has some expectations for this draft class. Well, congratulations, Cowboys Nation, on your top of the line A-plus state-of-the-art draft class. It's a bit refreshing with all the arguing we've done about the coaching search and the quarterback and the playoff success. It's nice to see everybody on the same page about an exciting development for your Dallas Cowboys. Now, when we're done celebrating and fist pumping the picks, what does that actually mean for football games? I thought Cowboys Executive Vice President of Player Personnel, Will McClay, had a great line last week when he said, it was a well-executed draft. We'll see if it was a home run when we step up to the plate. Obviously, nobody in this draft class has played a snap of NFL football. As of right now, it's not 100% clear when they will take a practice field. But you just want to look at this group if you're trying to gauge your expectations i think it's interesting to look at what you can expect fortunately for us the cowboys did have a grand slam draft class not that long ago the 2016 crop that yielded ezekiel elliott dak prescott jalen smith malik collins and others is this one on par with that i honestly think it is starting with rookie expectations look you didn't draft cd lamb 17th overall to sit on the bench and develop. Is he the Cowboys' top receiver right away? Probably not, but I certainly consider him an upgrade over Randall Cobb, a guy that can step right in and play 65 plus percent of the snaps and be a viable part of the offense. What about Trayvon Diggs? I'm a little less willing to heap expectations on him. He's pick 51. You're stepping into a secondary where there's three established starters and some other veterans on top of that. I would absolutely love it if he can compete for a starting role. If he doesn't get it right away, I don't think that's the end of the world. Same thing goes for Neville Gallimore, pick 82 at defensive tackle. I think behind the likes of Gerald McCoy and Dontari Poe, you're probably talking about a rotational defensive tackle, but with that veteran talent in front of him, I don't think that's the end of the world. Reggie Robinson, singling out special teams for you my man guy blocked four kicks during his college career even if he can't secure a starting job in this secondary i think there's plenty of work for him to go around so do the math i think you look at these seven picks the only guys that i absolutely don't think factor into the playing field in their first season it's probably just Ben DiNucci. Uh, even, you know, Tyler Biotish, the center, we'll see if he can compete for a starting job. Even if he doesn't, he's a, a depth player. Same thing goes for Bradley Anai. I like his odds as a rotational guy. So again, compare that with 2016. You get starters out of Zeke, Dak, and Malik Collins. Even Jalen Smith had to wait a year before he joined in on the fun. So if the Cowboys can get one, maybe two bona fide starters out of this class as rookies and then see where the likes of uh, Gallimore and Trayvon Diggs come along in the future, this really does have the potential to be a grand slam when it's all said and done. We will see how they play when they finally take the field, but there is every reason to feel really, really good about this group's potential. All right, thanks, Dave. Up next here on The Blitz, let's take a trip around the NFC East. Perhaps we'll give some grades on how the Redskins, the Giants, and the Eagles did during draft weekend. The Blitz, your Dallas Cowboys report continues now. Bill Jones with Kyle Yeomans as we take a look around the NFC East. And how about we start with the Washington Redskins, Kyle, who had the highest pick of all the NFC East teams last week. They take Chase Young, and they've got some edge rushers on their team now with uh, Chase Young out of Ohio State to go along with a top pick, Montez Sweat, and the veteran Ryan Kerrigan. 
Yeah, that defensive line is scary, Bill, but you talk about the top pick in the draft and the earliest pick out of the division with that second overall selection of Chase Young. That's really the only big part that kind of gets me excited about that draft for Washington and the Redskins. Now, you, you can't necessarily knock any of the picks that they ended up having because you have Chase Young. You bring in Antonio Gibson, and he's got kind of a Tony Pollard vibe to it out of the backfield from Memphis. and. A guy who's listed as a wide receiver, he played running back quite a bit during his time with the Tigers. So he brings some of that added emphasis in terms of kind of opening up the backfield a little bit with Adrian Peterson. They have Sadiq Charles that comes in, another offensive line that, that kind of adds to the mix. And then Antonio Gandy-Golden, somebody they desperately needed to bring a little bit more of a deep threat in terms of that receiving core. So Washington, kind of a mad draft when you, when you talk about after Chase Young, but the fact that you're going to have to face Chase Young twice a year over the next half decade that's a little bit scary for those offensive tackles in the division especially if you're looking at a, a guy who's going to be one of the best edge rushers in the league and you know, moving on to the new york giants of course jason garrett now the offensive coordinator for joe judge in new york they go offensive tackle with a fourth overall pick andrew thomas out of uh, georgia take the safety xavier mckinney out of alabama in the second round didn't help the wide receiver position at all though yeah, they didn't address that, but they sure did address that offensive line, and you'd have to think maybe Jason Garrett has a little bit to do with that. They've got a young quarterback in Daniel Jones. They've got a solid running back in Saquon Barkley. You needed to beef up that offensive line, and they did just that with Andrew Thomas, probably arguably one of the best left tackles in the in the entire draft class. They take him as the first draft or drafted offensive tackle off the board. They do address the secondary with McKinney. Also, you could throw Darnay Holmes in there as well, a corner who could have some impact as well but the fact that they go out and get three offensive linemen in their first five selections shows that they're trying to play it safe with both Saquon Barkley excuse me and then also Daniel Jones because they have some opportunity to beef up that line all right Philadelphia Eagles they take a wide receiver in the first round there were there was talk they would have liked to have moved up and taken C.D. Lamb of course the Cowboys took him but Jalen Rager had a TCU and Wasahatchee their first round pick and then the somewhat controversial Jalen Hurts the quarterback from Oklahoma in the second round it's controversial but it makes a lot of sense and the fact that you have a quarterback in Carson Wentz who does find himself on the bench hurt quite a bit it does end up playing a factor in how you look at the backup quarterback position and I think they wanted to address that a little bit early on and to have a, a formidable yet building quarterback and an ascending player like Jalen Hurts and they weapon weaponize that offense as well you talked about the selection of Jalen Rager but then they also go out and they take a, a, a couple extra receivers they acquire Marquise Goodwin over the course of the draft just with a, a fourth round pick so the fact that they've redone that offense in terms of the skills position outside, it, it makes things a little bit more dangerous for that Philadelphia Eagles squad as they do have some guys to throw to finally after a tough season last year. And uh, we won't give grades to the NFC East opponents of the Cowboys, but uh, if you listen to the so-called experts out there, the Cowboys had one of the best drafts in the league. It remains to be seen, however, for all of these drafts, just how good they really are. All right, when we come back here on the Blitz, numbers given out by the Cowboys to these rookies when the Blitz continues in a moment. The Dallas Cowboys Blitz was brought to you by AT&T. Just okay is not okay. And by the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. Final minute of the Blitz, your Dallas Cowboys report. Bill Jones with Kyle Yeomans, and numbers have been given out to this draft class. And let's start at the top of the class, number 17 overall, C.D. Lamb, and he gets number 88 as Jerry Jones wanted him to have, number 88. It's such a famous number. It's got that iconic look. Des Bryant, Michael Irvin, Drew Pearson, now C.D. Lamb. He's got a lot to give or, or to live up to, some big shoes to fill, but I think if you look at the hype around it, it makes a lot of sense, and there's a lot of excitement around C.D. Lamb wearing that number, but I also kind of want to point out Trayvon Diggs. They didn't take a whole lot of time moving on from Byron Jones' 31. He'll be wearing that 31 later, and I think 51's a pretty good fit 
for the fifth round selection and Bradley and I because I, I don't know just seeing 51 coming off the edge that excites me a little bit because I think he could play an impact and look good in that number two all right Kyle Yeomans who is number 15 for Babe Laufenberg back in his playing days we appreciate it Kyle for Kyle I'm Bill Jones and we'll see you again next week here on the Blitz